What happened to the Bo Brummels? Sal Valentino spent his childhood in San Francisco's North Beach neighborhood. After making several singing appearances on local television in the early part of 1964, Valentino was offered a regular gig at the San Francisco club El Cid. He contacted his former friend, songwriter-guitarist Ron Elliott, who enlisted the help of drummer John Peterson, rhythm guitarist Declan Mulgan, and bassist Ron Marr. Victor Savant was in the band for a brief time as a piano player, but he never recorded with the band. He became famous in Europe as the musical director for Roberto Blanco, a singer. The gig led to a more lucrative contract at the nearby San Mateo, California club called the Morocco Room. In the meantime, two DJs, Tom Donahue and Bobby Mitchell, were looking for a new artist to add to their newly established Autumn Records label. Donahue and Mitchell wanted to make money from the Beatlemania craze, which had started in the UK the year before and was now spreading to the US. Donahue and Mitchell were invited to the Morocco Room by Rich Ramanello, the Brummel's first manager and owner. The Bo Brummel signed with Autumn, where the group's early recording sessions were produced by Sylvester Stewart, later known as Sly Stone of Sly and the Family Stone. The British mistress, Bo Brummel, gave the Bo Brummels their name. The group liked having a name that sounded like Britain, and there is a legend that because it was so close to the Beatles in the alphabet, they were aware that their records would likely be in record store bins right behind them. Laugh Laugh was the band's highest charting single in Canada, where it reached number two on the Canadian singles chart. The band's follow-up single, Just a Little, became the band's highest charting single in the U.S., peaking at number eight in June. Both songs were included on the band's debut album, introducing the Bo Brummels, which was released in April and reached number 24 on the Billboard 200 albums chart. In the 1965 science fiction comedy film Village of the Giants, the band performed in their role and was later featured in an episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000 in 1994. On the animated sitcom The Flintstones, the band made an appearance as the Bo Brummelstones in the season 6 episode Shinrock A Go Go, which aired on December 3rd, 1965. Mulligan was no longer a member of the band when recording for the band's second album, 1965's The Bo Brummels Volume 2, began. Mulligan filed a lawsuit in 1966 claiming he had been unfairly dismissed from the group. The lead single from the album, You Tell Me Why, was the band's third and final top 40 hit in the U.S., peaking at number 38 in August 1965. In November, another single, Don't Talk to Strangers, reached number 52. According to Sal Valentino and Ron Elliott, Stone was credited as the album's producer, but his involvement had diminished to the point where the band does not recall any producer being in charge. Elliott's diabetic condition began to cause seizures by the year's end, rendering him unable to perform. When the group recorded with them and performed live, Don Irving replaced Elliot on guitar. In Wild Wild Winter, a Universal Pictures comedy film inspired by beach parties and released on January 5, 1966, Bo Brummels made a musical guest appearance performing Just Wait and See. The film was made in 1965 before Village of the Giants when Mulgan was still in the band. Even though Autumn was on the verge of failure, the band continued making new music. The band's third album for Autumn would most likely have included songs like I Grow Old, Gentle Wandering Ways, and Dream On, as well as Valentino composed tracks like Love Is Just A Game, This Is Love, and Hey Love. However, the entire Autumn lineup, including the Bo Brummels, was transferred to Warner Brothers Records before the completion and release of an album. However, Warner Brothers decided against the band releasing an album of original material because the company did not control the band's publishing. San Fran Sessions, a compilation album released in 2005, included previously unreleased songs. 
Warner Brothers, on the other hand, decided to have the band record an album of covers. Bo Brummel 66, which came out in July 1966, was viewed as a commercial and critical failure. The band's sixth and final Hot 100 chart entry, One Too Many Mornings, a Bob Dylan cover, peaked at number 95 in June. After the album was released, Peterson joined Harper's Bazaar, and Irving left when he received an induction notice into the military. The remaining three members ceased touring to concentrate on studio work. Lenny Waronker produced the next album, Triangle, and they resumed writing original material for it. The album was made possible by session musicians like Van Dyke Parks, who played harpsichord on Magic Hollow. Triangle, which came out in July 1967, only made it to number 197 on the Billboard 200 Albums chart. However, in her 1969 Rock Encyclopedia, Australian journalist and Arthur Lillian Roxon praised the album. Marr was drafted into the military in 1968, now leaving Valentino and Elliot as the Bo Brummels. For their fifth album, the duo worked with well-known Nashville session musicians like guitarist Jerry Reed and drummer Kenny Buttry, who played on Bob Dylan's albums from 1966 to 1969. The album Bradley's Barn was named after the recording studio because the Bo Brummels were so pleased with the results at the studio. The Bo Brummels disbanded soon after the album's release in October 1968. Valentino started a new band called Stoneground in 1969 and recorded solo singles for Warner Brother Records. Stoneground was associated with the hippie community The Hog Farm in the early 1970s. In 1973, after releasing three albums, the group split up. Elliot, who arranged roots for the Everly Brothers and played guitar on Van Dyke Park's debut album Song Cycle in 1968, released a solo album in 1970 titled The Candlestick Maker. Elliot produced Levitt and McClure and Pan albums in the early 1970s and played on Little Feet, Van Morrison, and Randy Newman albums. In the meantime, Mulligan and Marr were Black Velvet band members. Peterson wed Roberto Templeman, the sister of Ted Templeman from Harper's Bazaar in 1969. Peterson remained a member of Harper's Bazaar up until the early 1970s when the group disbanded. The Bo Brummels had reformed in San Francisco according to an article published in Billboard magazine in February 1974. The band resumed touring and in 2000, the live album released a 1974 performance that was recorded in Fairs Oak Village near Sacramento, California. The band put out their self-titled studio album in April 1975, which peaked at number 180 on the Billboard 200 Albums chart. The band re-recorded You Tell Me Why, one of their earlier singles from 1965 for the album. The Bo Brummels continued to work in various incarnations from the late 70s through the middle of the 1990s including performances with the Smithereens and frequent collaborations with Dinosaurs, the psychedelic era supergroup. Additionally, the band participated in San Francisco-based festivals like the Bay Pop 2000 Festival and the Summer of Love Festival in 2002. Dreaming Man, Valentino's first solo album in 50 years, was released in 2006. Later that year, he released another album, Come Out Tonight, and in 2008, he released his third solo album, Every Now and Then. On November 11th, 2007, John Peterson suffered a heart attack and died. Continuum, a studio album recorded by the remaining members of the band, was released in March 2013 on Bass Sound Records. The album contains 15 songs written by Elliot as well as re-recordings of Just a Little, Don't Talk to Strangers, and Laugh Laugh, as well as drum tracks that were recorded by Peterson in 1965. Numerous compilations have been made about the Bo Brummels. In 2021, the British label Cherry Red released a massive 8-disc box set that included the band's entire output from the 1960s.
At the age of 83, Declan Mulligan passed away on November 2nd, 2021. And that's what happened to the Bo Brummels. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know. Give me some facts about the Bo Brummels that I failed to mention. And who should I do next on this channel? Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.